Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about inheritance of two genes. Now in the last section we discussed crossing between parents that differ in one trait. For example, we, uh, we took plants which are tall or dwarf. So just one trait was considered and that was the height of the plant. Again, we either con we considered the seed shape, either round or wrinkled. So only one trait was considered and that was seed shape. Similarly, only one trait was considered when we crossed red and white flowers and that was the flower color. But now we will consider two genes. Basically, we will consider two traits. We will see that we will try to cross two parents which differ in two traits. So, what was Mendel's contribution to study inheritance of two genes? Again, Mendel performed a series of experiments with the same tea plant to study the inheritance of two genes. So, what did he do? He cross-pollinated pea plants that differed in two traits and this type of cross was known as dihybrid cross. So what, what are the traits that he selected for this? He took round and yellow seeds and crossed them with wrinkled and green seeds. So basically what are the two traits that he considered? Round and wrinkled. They denote the seed shape. So seed shape was one trait and the other trait was the seed color. So seed color and seed shape were the two traits that were considered by Mendel and he crossed the round and yellow seed seeds with the wrinkled and the green seeds. And now we will see what happened as a result of this cross. So now when he cross pollinated pea plants with homozygous round and yellow seeds. Homozygous means both the alleles are going to be the same. So what would be the genotype of homozygous round? Round is denoted by capital R. Homozygous round means capital R, capital R. Yellow is denoted by capital Y. Again if this is homozygous so it is going to be capital Y, capital Y. So this is how we will denote homozygous round and yellow seeds. And how do we denote homozygous wrinkled and green seeds? So wrinkled will be small y, small y and green will be small y, small y and wrinkled will be small r, small r. So these are the genotypes of the two parents. So this was round and yellow seeds and this was green and wrinkled seeds. So both of these were crossed. So when these two were crossed, what happened? It was observed that in the F1 generation, so this was F1 generation, all the seeds that were produced, they were yellow and they were round. So that means, again as per Mendel's principle of dominance, only one trait dominated and the dominant trait among these was the round shape was dominant and the yellow color was dominant. So that is why in the F1 generation, all were round and yellow. Correct? So this is what was found in F1 generation. So this was the parental generation. So then next, what did he do? Then he again in a similar way, he self-pollinated the F1 generation. That means this F1 generation was crossed with itself. So the, these were the F1 generation plants. So they were crossed amongst themselves and what was found? It was found that in the F2 generation, there were these many round and yellow seeds which were produced. So how many are there? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So total 9 seeds were round and yellow. It was observed that there were some 3 seeds which were green but round. So the color of the seed was green but the seed was round. And there was again some 3 seeds which were yellow and wrinkled. And there was just one seed which there was just one plant with green and wrinkled seed. So this was the result. Now this result was quite different than what was observed in case of the inheritance of one gene. That is in case of monohybrid cross. In monohybrid cross it was pretty simple because only one trait was being considered. So the 
F2 number of uh, outcomes in F2 were also less, but here the possibilities were more, and here we saw that different traits were combined with different traits, right? So this was interesting. So now Mendel wanted to understand why this happened. So this was the F2 generation. So this entire thing which was observed, this was an F2 generation. So what was Mendel's observation looking at this uh, dihybrid cross? So Mendel observed that F1 generation displayed only one of the parental trait. And what was that one trait which got displayed? It was yellow and round. So what did it show? It showed that the yellow color was dominant over green color and the round shape was dominant over the wrinkled shape. So it showed that only the dominant trait got displayed in the F1 generation and the recessive trait that is the green and wrinkled that remained hidden. So now does that mean that the hidden trait is lost or it got mixed up with something? No, that is not the case. It remained hidden but it got displayed later in the next generation. So here it was shown that yellow was dominant over green and round was dominant over wrinkled. Then it showed that the hidden trait in F1 generation reappeared unchanged in F2 generation. So that what was the hidden trait? The hidden trait was green and wrinkled. So if you see in the F2 generation, they were displayed as it is. The same wrinkled, the same green. It was not that green turned into blue or wrinkled turned into some other shape. It was not like that. So they, they were hidden but they were they were retaining their identity and they expressed themselves again in the F2 generation, right? So, different forms of traits retain their identity. That is what was told by uh, Mendel's principle of segregation. You remember? Mendel gave his principle of segregation. So, as per Mendel, when he was performing uh, this dihybrid cross, he found that even the dihybrid cross is also, uh, I mean, it is also giving a green signal to his principle of segregation and the principle of dominance. So, if you see the first observation, this first observation actually caters to his principle of dominance. And based on this monohybrid and dihybrid cross, Mendel was so confident about these principles which he gave. Okay? But however, later exceptions started coming up and that is how we came up with incomplete dominance, co-dominance, etc. Okay, so that was another observation. So he found that four types of plants were obtained in the F2 generation in a dihybrid cross. And what were the four types? If they had round and yellow, round and green, wrinkled and yellow, wrinkled and green. So why did he observe these four types of uh, plants in F2 generation? Because he started it with only two types of plants. One was round and yellow and the other was wrinkled but green. But there were more combinations which were being formed. So we got two new combinations that is round and green and yellow and wrinkled. So these were the new combinations obtained. Now these new combinations were obtained because each of this trait, whether it is the shape of the seed or the color of the seed, they were like independent of each other. So when gamete formation take place, they also segregated independently. Like how in case of one trait, how it used to be. Suppose tall and dwarf. So tall and dwarf, they used to segregate for gamete formation, right? So similarly, if two traits are present together, for example, round, I mean round and wrinkled is one trait and again green and yellow is another trait. So both of them will segregate for formation of gametes and they will be independent of each other. So the shape of the seed is not dependent on the color of the seed. So they will segregate independently and this is where Mendel came up with another important principle. We will talk about that principle a little later. So basically this was Mendel's observation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.